Um, okay, we're now we're being recorded. Look out. Anything we will say will be taken down in evidence and may be used against us. <laughs> See it, spot it, report it, and we will sort it. Nama Om Vishnu Vadaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhakale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Santi Namani Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Bhacharine Nivasisha Sunyavadi Pashtatana Satanine Jaya Sri Krishna Jaitanya Prabhunita Ananda Shri Advaita Katadha Shiva Sadi Gaura Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Ram Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Welcome, Mother Paradisham. Thank you for joining us. So we're continuing. Beginning uh, chapter 39. We finished chapter 38. And let's have a look. Chapter 39. There's 40 chapters in this book. So quite exciting. We're on chapter 39. Okay, so Maharaj is given a dissertation on Kripa, mercy. Yeah, the last chapter was entitled, was entitled, I think it still is entitled, <laughs> hasn't changed. The Sankalpas corresponding to grace. Okay, quite a long chapter. And now on chapter 39, Krishna's grace descends through Vaishnavas. And we have spoken and read quite a bit about this. So it would be interesting to see how Marge elaborates on this specific topic. Okay, so um, everything's in order. Press record, set the prayers, let the devotees in. I don't think no one here has... Like, what if you make me a uh, co-host, so then if anyone it is, I will... Because it's okay. I, this one does not, it is, it's okay. I can handle it. Not so many tune in here. Perhaps 10 might come. Eight. Okay. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Order, order, order. Welcome. So, chapter 39 Krishna descends through Krishna's grace. So, it descends through Vaishnavas. Okay. So, begin reading. And then we'll. Perhaps at some point, Mother Chandavali, you might like to take up reading. Mm -hmm. Page 809. Yep. Okay. Let me turn the fan off here. It's a bit, a bit noisy. Okay. Hare Krishna. Okay. So. In the two preceding chapters, we explored the descent of divine grace upon devotees and non-devotees. So that is the verse, Samaham Sarabhote Shu. The source of mercy is the Supreme Lord, and the channel through which it manifests is the advanced Vaishnava. Mercy is a voluntary act of kindness by which the Supreme or his representative gift the priceless treasure of pure devotion to the needy soul. So, when saints see the suffering of materialists, they are moved to bless them with, with uh, bhakti. And when the Lord hears a practitioner's earnest plea for eternal service, he blesses the devotee with prema. The perfected devotees and eternally perfect devotees revel in an eternal in an eternal downpour of mercy in the land of mercy. All right, so that was like a summary. <laughs> uh, very, yeah, wonderful paragraph. I could say lots about that, but let's continue. <laughs> Understanding the causes and movements of divine grace, a sadhaka can learn to act in ways that makes him its re recipient. Okay, so that's what we want to learn to do. Line ourselves up to receive that grace. Yeah. Thus, by the empowerment of Kripa Shakti, a devotee can traverse, can traverse the stages of sadhana to its perfection, which is ecstatic devotion. Okay, so this book is all about achieving that. 
yeah, ecstatic devotion, which means bhava. It is this last transition from sadhana to bhava that poses the greatest challenge because it is the most difficult transition in bhakti. It requires the most extraordinary grace. And as always, if you have any questions or something's not clear, please feel free to ask or bring up. Okay. Which in turn requires the most, a most un, unpre, unprecedented, um, unprecedented, excuse me, appeal for love on the part of the sadhaka. So, um, so never before. Yes, it's not been seen before. So we have to come to that um, level of purity where we can really cry out for the Lord. Just a quick, from sadhana to bhakti, so from Vaisi bhakti to Raganuga? Well, you could say bhava automatically yes. includes Raganuga. That yes. has to be understood. One has a spontaneous attraction to Krishna. But can Krishna. I ask one? Something. So faith wouldn't be enough because it says extraordinary mercy. Mm. So faith is not enough like we have, but we need also a little push. Yeah, this this this, this is the um and this is the underlying truth of Kripa. So in other words, through sadhana and through our own faith and through sadhana, we reach the glass ceiling, so to speak. We can reach the top. But then to go further, Kripa has to come down. Nice. Up to go further, Kripa is essential for us to come. No matter how much you've endeavored in your own practice, still, that's not enough. <laughs> in the sense that Krishna is completely independent. So it's that Kripa that comes down. But we're going to hear through the Vaishnavas. I don't know if that answered your question, Mother. Yes, you, you need to make your steps till there, otherwise nothing happens. You need to do yeah. the job. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, Kripa can come to anyone at any stage, but generally it's going to come to those who are who's kind of those who have applied themselves to the to the attentive practice of hearing and chanting, and they call out and cry out with a pure heart. Then Kripa comes, then the, then the mercy, then one obtains Bhava. But we can. Vaishnava's mercy, right? Yeah, so let's see how Marge then okay. that into the um, equation. Okay. In short, Ram Sankirtan of the Sadaka, enhanced by his humble cries of of estrangement from Krishna means distanced from Krishna must move the heart of the Lord as never before All right mm -hmm. so it's really got to be coming from crying out that you so far from Krishna yeah deep within your core of your very soul mm -hmm. you are crying out to Krishna yeah in this chapter, we shall attempt to put into words the sublime realizations that transpire during the fulfillment of the purpose of Sadhana Bhakti. Okay. It is inevitable that sincere devotees are eager to know how and when they will obtain the mercy of Bhava Bhakti. Yeah, this is the question we all have, isn't it? When, how? When. The means by which ecstatic devotion is accomplished is the same as the means by which any stage of devotion is reached. Okay, so having explained, Marj said it is unprecedented effort, but actually, it's the method of obtaining it is the same as what we've what we're already applying. The means by which ecstatic devotion is accomplished is the same as the means by which any stage of devotion is reached by the practice of bhakti. Devotion begets devotion. Bhakta shanjatadaya bhakta. By the practice of sadhana bhakti, 
bhava bhakti manifests in in due course yeah hmm. what due course yeah in due course it may not be two or three weeks but in due course would be like a few hours probably <laughs> <laughs> Since it is very rare, we shall not consider bhava that is fortuned by the grace devoid of the desire for it. Okay, so sometimes it can come. Let me go muting. Okay, got it. Muting. Okay, so you got that? Yeah, we had a few hours. Okay. Yeah, well, since it is very rare, rare, we shall not consider bhava that comes that is fulfilled by a grace devoid of a desire for it. So, so that's not our subject of study because we, we are sadhakas and we are desiring to have it. So we want to know what is that path for invoking the kripa of bhava. Yeah, so that kind of perfection is the exception. And we are concerned with the general case, perfection through sadhana. Whether it is accomplished through practice or mercy, ecstatic devotion cannot be had without mercy. So when we speak of bhava secured through sadhana, we actually mean bhava secured through sadhana and kripa. And while every form of mercy is in every state of sadhana is spiritual, the mercy by which the perfection of sadhana is accomplished is special. It is inherent in the following definition of Pava Bhakti. Suda Sattva Visheshatma Premasu Amshus Sami Bhakti Ruchibhishtita Matsvinya Kritasu Bhava Uchate. When devotional service is executed on the transcendental platform of Suda Sattva, pure goodness it's like a ray it's like a sun ray of love for krishna prema sul amsu yeah at such a time devotional service causes the heart to be softened so the chitta masrinya by various tastes then one is situated in bhava unquote Small crowd today. Just looking. This summary of love has been already described in the previous chapters as the spirited combination of a fundamental element of both the cognizance and pleasure potencies. So, what's the name of the cognizance potency? Some bit. Yeah. And the pleasure potency is more well known. Ladini. Ladini. Ladini, yeah. So when they combine, when bhava exists, while bhava or exists eternally within the heart, so it's there. You know, love of God is there within the heart. It has lain dormant, but now the active form of bhava from the heart of the Lord or from His associate actuates the dormant bhava of of the sadhana. I think that should be sadhaka. Can I just jump quick ask something? So yeah. usually or we have some wheat or ladini, but then when we are in the in the close to the devotees, then both of them will be activated and then will they will do what they need to do together. Yeah, that's basically it. That's another way of describing it. Um, basic bhava or love for God, which consists of the Lord's internal potency, is there with the jiva, but it's dormant. Now, to invoke that dormant love, that's the kripa coming from the Lord or the devotee. So, so that's why we need an association of devotees, because yeah. we are table we devotees something goes through my mind like devotees they're colonizing us let's say like this i don't know why this word comes yeah. to my mind but that's a, yeah that's another interesting um uh 
uh, conclusion about that we need the association of devotees. So often it's brought up that we need the association of devotees to actually make advancement. So the last, there's few classes where it's been, one devotee gave a nice class, um, Pati the Bhavana, that in association of devotees, then your undevotional qualities will become manifest <laughs> sometimes when you get purified. But really, also, if you associate with devotees, you will get their blessings. If you don't associate with devotees, then you won't get blessings from devotees. Yeah, then, then you won't get the Kripa. Unless, unless it's a special circumstance. Say, for instance, you circumstantially, you just don't, you may not get the chance to associate very on very much with uh, um, um, with devotees, yeah, circumstantially. But still, if you're following the instructions of the devotees, or you're following the instructions of your spiritual master, and that's a different situation. That means you, I mean, you're, you're still going to get the mercy of the devotees. Anyway, going off the track a bit, but... but here is, you're talking about, like, association of senior devotees, right? Yeah, well, Marge did say, Marge, yeah, yeah, generally that's what association means. It means to associate with those who are senior to you or advanced to you in, uh, in a devotion. Yeah, I was speaking to after the class on Sunday, on devotees asking questions afterwards about what does it mean to associate with devotees? So I was explaining, well, it doesn't mean association with devotees is that devotee you sit next to when you're eating three pieces of pizza <laughs> yeah. Yeah. service service you need to serve each other well in other words yes you know sometimes think association devotees means those who you sit next to at lunch those you joke around with those that oh i'm so sick no association means you you inquire from senior devotees that's what association actually means mm. That's what subtle sangha is about, is means you're inquiring from Vaishnavas, or you're serving Vaishnavas, you're inquiring from Vaishnavas. It doesn't mean you're just, you know, hanging out with them, you know. It does in one sense, but, really, but in, in real in essence, association means to to know how to, to, to know how to, what's that, I'm trying to find that again, to, we, we should know the of um, getting nectar from the Vaishnavas. Sorry, Madhu Mongo, continue. Sorry, I was keep speaking over, excuse me, please. Extracting the mango. Yeah, extracting the nectar from the Vaishnavas. So anyway, so... But then these days, say people are more listening um, from home, things like that, not really coming to listen to Maharajis at, at the temple. So then where is the... How did that work? Well, then you could say it it, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. We have to arrange our life in such a way that we come in close contact with Vaishnavas. For, and then now for most of us, it is possible, unless we're living on a desert island somewhere, or we're living in North Korea, or we're living in some out forsaken place, but, you know, they both could give different answers on this, but I would say we, we should somehow now that we should arrange a life in such a way that we do come in physical contact with Vaishnavas, if at all possible. Now, no doubt if it's not possible, Krishna will make up for that, <laughs> if, um, um, if we are sincere. And he does. I mean, I know stories, one friend of mine, I haven't seen him for a few years. Perhaps he's back in prison, but he was in prison. <laughs> and he was practicing devotion before. Then he went off the tracks a bit and he got put in prison. Then he started getting really serious about his sadhana. So he had no association devotees, but he experienced Krishna's grace and mercy. So, so in circumstances, Krishna will carry what we lack and preserve what we have. But we shouldn't. Um, we should try as much as possible to arrange the life in such a way that we had, that we do come in contact with Vaishnavas. Yeah, just like Mother Gopi Gita, 
and the family then they they invited Jananda Maharaj for prasadam like that, you know. Mm. And so he came personally to the house, you know. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Then also but you need to go to India once a year. Yeah, if you can do that, that's great. If you can go to the Holy Dharm where Vaishnavas come and give lecture and give the association. Yes. You should make use of it. That's, that's why Prabhupada created Mayapur, or he established uh, the uh, International Site for Krishna Consciousness, having a base in Mayapur, so people from all over the world could come, and devotees can associate together. For this thing, for this, so we're highlighting here in the context of getting Kripa. Yeah. All right. Should we carry on? Yeah, that's why I think like when we do these classes tonight and evening, and now mm. at least we're getting association of devotees that you don't. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, an, interesting, um, it's an interesting dynamic, which are perhaps would be an interesting question to ask seeing the devotees or my guru Raj on this, you know. What is, you know, does the principle of association, is it still fully manifest when you associate online? Huh. Yeah, but we it should, if we follow Vani, it's more important Vani, no? So then it's still the same, it's instruction. <laughs> yeah, so it's in, like we could say it's a bit tatashta. It's like you've got personal association, then you've got association of instructions with the instructions of the devotees, and then in between, we've got Zoom. <laughs> because I don't believe there is distance. It doesn't exist distance, isn't it, in spiritual world? It's yeah. just spirit soul travels through anything. But well, the more yeah, yeah, so, yeah, Mother Mongo is making a good point, is that um, spiritual potency is not restricted by physical distance it mm. works on a different dimension it works on a different plane yeah should i probably give initiation through letter with letters and the beads For then it should, whatever guru says it should uh, uh, manifest itself or whatever yeah. they want yeah this, they is of... yeah this is a nice conclusion it's by the mercy of the Jew, then these things, uh, they're mercifully flow through Zoom <laughs> or whatever platform you're using. I know during the lockdown, uh, many gurus were giving initiation through Zoom mm -hmm. uh, while giving online. I mean, Gayatri Mother, you took initiation online, isn't it? Is that right? Can you hear us? Are you walking in the park? <laughs> She's taking, walking. Yeah, I think, I think she took initiation. Yes, yeah, she did. She did. Yeah. So it still has, so Krishna can make up the shortcomings. But let's get back on track, kind of. Um, yeah, where are we? I don't even know now. Yeah, all right, we're down the bottom of 810. So, this yeah. The following example, which has also been mentioned in chapter 8, is appropriate. Fire is dormant in every piece of wood. Okay. So fire absorbs the sun and it dries out, so it holds within it fire. Yeah. Which has also been mentioned in chapter 8, is appropriate. Fire is dormant in every piece of wood, but until that inner fire manifests, the wood cannot burn to create heat and light. However, when a burning stick contacts a length of wood, then the latter is set alight. All right, interesting example. Mm. So, Bhava, love for Krishna is within our heart, it's dormant. So, when it gets lit by a devotee, by an advanced Vaishnava, he can light that. Yeah, so to speak, we can become set on fire. <laughs> Not literally, but yeah. mm. the delimitation of this example is that the fire which burns a length of wood 
quickly consumes the wood and hence itself. But once Bhava awakens within a devotee, it continues to burn as its own flame, while simultaneously transforming it into the flame of prema. In that way, two flames of devotion burn within a devotee, the flame of Bhava and the flame of prema. Moreover, these flames are never extinguished, for they are fed by the fuel of bhakti, which is eternal and endless. And I think Maharaj will bring this up perhaps in this chapter, that Bhava can only come from a devotee who has Bhava. Okay? Mm. Maharaj gives this, from those who have prema, one can get prema, from those who have Bhava, like that. And I forget, for those, it's certain, for those at Nishta, they can give this, I forget now, might come up, for those at Ruchi, they can give this, you know, to their dependents, like that. Okay. We quote Rupa Goswami's de description of the appearance of Baba and Srila Prabhupada's comment on it. So Rupa Goswami is known as Arasa Acharya. So he writes, Baba appears in very fortunate persons in two ways. By absorption in sadhana or by the mercy of Krishna or his devotee. Its appearance by sadhana is normal and its appearance by mercy is rare. Okay. So, mm. it says absorption in sadhana. Yeah. So, if you really, I mean, it depends on your, your feelings. If you really properly perform your sadhana, then Krishna will be merciful. And yeah, it seems to contradict what we've read so far, because mm -hmm. the idea here is that it can only come through the Vaishnava, but then you still need to be lit up, isn't it? You yes. need to get the mercy from the guru, so then you will maintain and it will grow that little. Yeah, I mean, sadhana. I mean, sadhana comes from guru. Guru will give you sadhana. Yeah, guru gives you nam. Guru gives you the practice of bhakti. Yeah. So let's read. Shri Parpad elaborates on the term sadan banvashanena absorption in sadhana all right so what does that mean then so yeah so here's the we should perhaps uh, read on then it's all answered so what does absorption in sadhana mean constant association with pure devotees that's how Prabhupada translates that term mm. yeah. absorption in sadhana means constant association with devotees yeah, it says pure devotees. With, so, with, with, yeah, with pure devotees. His summary study further says, quote, one can develop to the stage of ecstatic love simply by the association of pure devotees. It is essential, therefore, that one constantly associate with pure devotees who are engaged morning and evening in chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. In this way, one will get the chance to purify his heart and develop this ecstatic pure love for Krishna. Okay. From Prabhupada. Unquote. The context in which Rupa Goswami and Srila Prabhupada describe this path to Bhava is the same. They give the example of Narada Muni, who as a boy constantly served, heard from, and associated with a group of great devotees camped near his home during the months of the rainy season. By their grace, Narada became advanced in ecstatic devotion. From this, we can assume that Srila Prabhupada's mandate of constantly associating with pure devotees includes, includes the association of advanced devotees. All right, so pure devotees at all the different levels, but specifically the association of advanced devotees. The reason for this will be apparent shortly. Krishna explains to Uddhava that a sadhaka who keeps company with pure devotees brings the Lord under his control. This extraordinary revelation would make clear to any practitioner intent on loving devotion that he must search out and revere the fellowship of advanced devotees. So this is what the international society of Krishna consciousness is about. It's about creating the opportunity for us to associate with advanced Vaishnavas or with 
pure devotees, yes? Um, indeed, no other form of yoga or spiritual practice can even come close to pleasing Krishna as much as the process he outlines below. So now this is quote here. I think this is from the 11th canto of the Shima Bhagavatam, Uddhava Gita. My dear Uddhava, by associating with my pure devotees, one can destroy one's attachment for all objects of material sense gratification. Such purifying association brings me under the control of my devotee. One may perform the Astanga Yoga system, engage in philosophical analysis of the elements of material nature, practice non-violence and other ordinary principles of piety, chant the Vedas, perform penances, take to the renounced order of life, execute sacrificial performances and dig wells, plant trees and perform other public welfare activities, give in charity, carry out severe vows, worship the demigods, chant confidential mantras, visit holy places, or accept major and minor disciplinary injunctions. But even by performing such activities, one does not bring me under his control. Unquote. In commenting on these verses, we shall concentrate only on the advantages of devotee association and not the shortcomings of other disciplines mentioned. It has already been established that bhakti is the only way to please and attain Krishna. The primary limb of sadhana is association with saints, for without it, one can neither hear, chant, nor remember Krishna. By serving Krishna in a company of devotees, the sadhaka is doubly blessed as he advances to the goal, purified of all attachment, Krishna comes under his control, so much so that when a devotee tearfully begs the Lord for ecstatic devotion, the purchased Lord is obliged to give it. This is the meaning of the two synonyms, Rutyati and Avarundade, which Krishna speaks to emphasize that keeping quality association brings him into his control. Right? Quality association brings Krishna under control. You know, so in other words, yeah, you develop love for Krishna. I, you know, like having senior association, I was thinking earlier years when we first joined, you could quite easily get a lot of association from gurus and other traveling gurus. But now, because the moment is bigger, when a, a guru comes, yeah. you don't often get really get chance to see or talk, talk or anything like that. Before we used to have like programs and marriages would come. Remember at my place, there'd be like 80, 90 devotees just running up and down the house. But now you can't, you know, do these things. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, yeah, but the, the most important thing is, is to hear from advanced Vaishnavas. So still, you know, devotees travel and we're actually perhaps more, I'm not, I don't know, but um, we don't do so bad. Coming through London, it's quite a few Vaishnavas come through. So we, we should, as much as possible, try and, try and hear from them. Now, maybe, you know, what I, what, from what I can see, um, when devotees, for instance, devotees like yourself, those who are in the community, when they're younger, younger, you know, they got a bit more energy for hosting big programs, you know, mm. 70, 60, but then as you get older, you don't have, <laughs> you don't have that same energy to give out, you know. The energy to yeah. But still, we should want to hear from, get the association of advanced Vaishnavas as much as possible, based on what we're reading here, you should want to. So I'm saying, so we might not be in the same, you know, if we don't get the opportunity for personal one and one, mm. you know, that will, that's always wonderful. But the most important thing is to be hearing from them. 
yeah. yeah. So that's the most important thing when they're given a class or like that, then we can hear. And that's considered the best type of association. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, devotees, Papa disciples, all made wonderful advancement in devotional service. And there was only one, you could say there's only one senior devotee. Yeah. The Srila Papa. Yeah. But they were serving his instructions. And, right, yeah. Plus, because he is somebody special. So the mercy was different, you know, he just like... Came yeah, out. he's, uh, yeah, the, the, yeah, he was a, uh, yeah, Prabhupada is extraordinary, his extraordinary status and position, yeah. But still, everything is available to us. There's nothing, isn't anything lacking. Everything is available. Let's read it, yeah, so... Okay. We may note that the control being spoken of here with words like rajati is not total absolute control over Krishna. All right. That is only possible for the siddha, the devotee possessed of condensed prema, like Navya Soda, Kadashani. Yeah. That kind of devotion has, as one of its characteristics, Krishna, Krishna, Ka, Shri Krishna Kashini. That's some nectar devotion, okay? Which means that Krishna, addicted to prema, thus it brings him under the devotee's control. But the control of sadhaka, either at sudden or barber, is not as complete. It is a conditional and partial constraint over Krishna. And therefore, a devotee cannot dictate the terms of Krishna's compliance in, a, in awarding bhava. Okay. Nonetheless, it is very much a control to be desired and accomplished. All right? Yeah. Let me turn my fan on again. It's a bit hot here. Powerful, very powerful. Yeah. All right. Um, let me read a little bit more, then perhaps Robert Chandavan, you can take over. Let me just read up to 816. Okay. Some authorities are of the opinion that the same result can be achieved by going on pilgrimage or residing in holy places. Krishna, however, does not share that view. No doubt these practices are purifying, but not as quickly or effectively as service to a pure devotee. Krishna says, well, mere bodies of water are not real sacred places of pilgrimage, nor are mere images of earth and stone True worshipful deities. Now that's referring to gods, okay? These purify one only after a long time. But saintly sages purify one immediately upon being seen. Okay. The, the reader may be startled to learn that Krishna considers association with sadhus more important, more potent than worshipping his deity form. Considering that Krishna is fully present in his deity, this may sound puzzling. Okay. But the simple explanation is that in his deity form, Krishna does not generally move or talk. Right? <laughs> he, he chooses to be passive. By contrast, a sadhu, a sadhu is proactive. And with the sword of his instructions, he cuts down the tangled weeds of a sadhaka's bad habits and plants the seed of love. In this way, saints make the Lord more quickly available, leaving Krishna's deity form. Yeah, so that's my mistake. It is referring even to the deity form of Krishna in this verse. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So it's like a... Yeah, mm -hmm. Going back to the verse beginning with Nat Rajati Mam Yogo, Lord Krishna makes control over, his, over him conditional on 
destroying one's attachment for all objects of material sense gratification. So that's what we have to do. Okay. Sava Sangha Papya. This too results from the influence of saints. Part five of this book described how a sadhaka must overcome the frailties that arise from fear, meaning bodily identification, before he can achieve the kind of attachment in which he thinks of Krishna as a friend or beloved. That kind of affection is only possible if the practitioner has a strong desire to serve Krishna in a way of the gopas or gopis. Okay, While an artist and offenses exert their influence, a devotee will generally worship Krishna along the path of regulations, referring him as the Supreme Personality to Godhead. Hmm. When these obstacles, so okay, Marge calls that an obstacle. <laughs> when these obstacles are overcome, Krishna gives the intelligence to approach him with intimacy in a way of his eternal associates. Then he quotes from, let's have a look. Quote now, quote look. The index quick, six. Pajavali by Rupa Goswami. Okay. When one develops an unflinching sense of ownership or possessiveness in relation to Lord Vishnu, or in other words, when one thinks Vishnu and no one else to be the only object of love, such an awakening is called bhakti by exalted, to pers exalted persons like Bhishma, Allah, Uddhava and Harada. Unquote. A sadhaka cultivates attachment in the wake of such love by meditating on Krishna's Raj pastimes to the accompaniment of the Sangatam of his holy names. Okay. While his devotion remains regulated, okay, so this is his devotion is regular. So we have Raghunuga Bhakti and we have Vaidhi Bhakti, and we have Raghunuga Bhakti. But and, and there's a mix between the two as well. It's mixed as well. One, it's not just one or the other. So, for example, we hear about to attract, we hear that the means to become. Uh, attracted to Krishna is to hear about his pastimes in um, in Raj. So we hear that's the right thing to do. So we practice that. Now that's Vaidhi. Because we've heard about it and we heard that we should do that. You understand? Mm -hmm. So that means we're Vaidhi. Oh, we should do like this. Yeah. Now it so happens that doing that will invoke your natural attraction and affection for Krishna. And eventually that will win over, you understand? So maybe Vaidhi, you know, the, the inspiration to hear Krishna and Krishna's pastimes, oh, I, we was reading in Sabakamudi that in order to devain, obtain attraction, to, we need to obtain attraction to Krishna's pastimes, then, then we should hear that. So all right, let me read Krishna's pastimes. <laughs> yeah, but that, yeah. Yeah, that, that means you're doing it under because Sastra tells you to. But still, if you do that, then your natural attraction for that will come. Your natural Raghunuga will actually come. Yeah. You understand? That's what it means by mixed. I used to think it was something else, but reading my Guru Maharaj's book, so it finally clicked what it means, this mixed Raghunuga and Vaidhi. And then when it gets to where it's not based on Sastra, it's your heart. Your heart just goes there naturally. You can ah, to about mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not based because of what you've been told to do in a book. Your heart has a natural has a natural attraction to that. That's the, that's the beginning stages of greed and loba. It's the beginning stages of Raghunuga. Raghunuga is stubborn. Like a mother. Mother knows naturally how to take care of the child. Yeah, you could say that, yeah. Yeah, she doesn't have to. I mean, she can read books and go online. <laughs> but it's not. The affection yeah. is naturally born. Yeah, it comes from my heart. That's, that's a good example. Uh -huh. It's Mr. Google now. Everything <laughs> <laughs> yeah. become Mr. Google. Okay, what, so what I'm thinking. So 
Sadna Raganuga. In between. Vaidhi Raganuga. Raganuga. The between space is where it's mixed. Yeah. And you sometimes you read and you think I should do it. Sometimes I should do it. And sometimes it's automatic. So you still go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then eventually by following that, then the it will become more natural for you. And it's and you're not doing it because because Sasha was telling you to do it. You're doing it because you love doing it. Long way to go, yeah. Because that's the natural state. It's natural to do it without thinking too much. Then you do it through love. Yeah, that's what's not being described. Not yeah, learning anymore, not. And and that's what it means when Prabhupada says in the nectar devotion that the devotees, that the pure devotees, don't don't necessarily follow the rules and regulations. What it doesn't mean is that they don't follow the four regulatory principles. <laughs> it, it, it they means, do follow. Yeah, they do follow naturally, but it means that they're in, they're inspired naturally from the heart to chant Krishna's name, etc. There's not a force that I need to chant my 16 rounds. Oh, how many rounds I have left. Oh, no, I need to read today. Oh, no, I need to do this. Oh, I need to have three showers per day. Oh, no. Yeah, well, that's, well, that's, that's yeah, but but that's um, but that has to be there for the natural to come. If like that's not there, then it's not going to come naturally. We're not going to develop that natural attraction if we don't apply ourselves to following Vaidhi very strictly. See, this is a mistake that um, Sahajas make or Babaji's make. They do away because for them Vaidhi is unneeded. You just go straight to um Asta Sattva, you go straight to Asta Kalya Leela, meditate on Krishna's pastimes, you know, without practicing Vaidhi. You know, but because but you can't heart... be a dentist, you can't be a dentist on the street just to pull teeth out if you don't know how to pull the teeth. Yeah, so in other words, yeah. <laughs> so in other words, so 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 then they're practicing Krishna Smaran with a dirty heart with an unpurified heart. So that is spiritual disaster. Yeah. And then they imitate. Some of them may start imitating symptoms of advancement. That's called Sahajiism. They take it cheaply. So it's not as if Vaidhi is not an important thing. <laughs> because unless you practice Vaidhi, we're not going to come to this stage. And that's why the example of Narada Muni is given. We see practice principles of Vaidhi, serving Vaishnavas, you know, and then a natural attraction became manifest within his heart. Can I jump in quick? Or last one, I will say. Yeah. It's yeah. like when you join the temple, sometimes devotee says, Oh no, they put me to clean the toilets. But they don't understand that actually from there you need to start and slowly, slowly build up and then learn every step. Because then you will not take it cheaply, and you will it will open inside your heart more than if someone ch just put you okay, go jump on, you know, in the kitchen. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's why that's why it's a very it's if one has the opportunity, then serving in a temple environment is is very good because you get to develop humility, you get to do menial service for Krishna. Yeah, I've had plenty. You know, on my knees cleaning the toilet when it smells of urine <laughs> as a you know new brahmacharis you know. all right perhaps we've got we've got 10 minutes left perhaps you can take over i feel like i'm hogging the whole reading that's okay it's work because it works that way shall i continue then or yeah continue because then you're stopping where you're stopping yeah yeah we're stopping yeah, okay it's, yeah Whereas I'll talk and you you have to like interrupt and yeah, okay, just carry on. Okay. Talk, sure. And where was we though? We got lost again. <laughs> okay. Page eight fifteen. Eight fifteen. Okay. He just finished while he yeah. does the minute. Okay. While his devotion remains regulated. The sadhaka meditates by efforts on Krishna's form, qualities, and pastimes. So he does it. 
by effort provided. In time, his Nam Bhajan transforms through stages of jhana. In, this is different stages of smaran, mm. to more advanced anushmiti and samadhi, where he longs after the promise of prema sankirtan. Chanting with intense longing will be the means for achieving bhava. So we had a whole spent a lot of time um, hearing about longing. Ripalumba, yeah. He, by which he realizes the confidential truths of Krishna and his pleasure potency. This much has already been said, but here is a further and key point. Such spiritual excellence can only be accomplished under the tutelage of experienced Vaishnavas who are very dear to Krishna. All, right, so all, all of that is done under the guidance and instruction of experienced Vaishnavas. So in one sense, we're getting that in the form of these instructions from Shiva Ram Swami Maharaj. You know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. So can, in a way, we're associating. Yeah. With that we're hearing his, his instructions and his conclusions and study and yeah, realizations, you know. Yeah, because I was thinking, you know, the books we're reading, we wouldn't be going that way if he hadn't written those books. You wouldn't even think things like that. No, 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 no. So, and so many other devotees who are not even reading, they're still not even getting there. So, well, we yeah, I mean, what Maharaj is describing is, is to be found in Prabhupada's books. Yeah, yeah. But it may not, but that... But having access to that may not be available to the general devotees without a deep, deep study of Prabhupada's books, then you may not come to these specific conclusions. Like but, I think but, that somebody's done that work for us. Yeah. Like really, they've picked out the essence and they've yeah. worked it out for us to see. It's very detailed, very detailed. Yeah. It's important, very important for certain questions of the mind. Yeah. But still, it doesn't because sometimes I hear Vaishnava speaking, and they speak the same conclusions as 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 what we're reading here, which means they deeply study Prabhupada's books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they've they've they deeply studied it and through their study. So it is available completely through Prabhupada's books, but it takes an, quite quite some study and cross reference to actually and realizations but here but again by the grace of a Vaishnava we are reading about these conclusions yeah. so Narada tells his ward Gobakamar so here we go we have Bhagavatamrita quote in the company of people whose whose only taste is for devotional service in, in pure love that love appears of its own accord Yet one must try hard to keep it concealed. Okay, this is a point Maharaj has often made, makes. Unquote. Now that instructs Gobakumar that the most effective way to achieve love is to keep company with those devotees who know its value and so have no other goal in life. Association with devotees means association with first class devotees. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uttama Adhikaris. For it is they who have the power to stimulate prema in an aspirant's heart. That was the case with Narada, who was so fortunate as to be blessed with the service of Bhaktivedanta. So again, associating devotees isn't those devotees who we eat pizza with. <laughs> There's this association means to, to associate with advanced Vaishnavas and the verse above concludes with a warning to the novice in love. Keep your love hidden. In his own commentary, Sanatana Goswami cites a proverb, Gopayet matri jara vat. One should keep prema hidden, just as one would conceal. <laughs> it's interesting. I remember reading this. Stuff. Wow, interesting uh, example. One should keep prema hidden, just as one would conceal the affairs of one's mother with a paramour. 
<laughs> interesting. interesting example from the, the, from, the from the proverb. This would be in his yeah, this would be a proverb he would have. So the humble conduct of the devotee is to conceal his attainments. Here Prema we here Prema refers to Bhava, because only this immature stage of love can be controlled. Once it matures fully, there is no controlling prema. Mm -hmm. I hey. think we, re we read, I don't know which book we read, but there was like a guru and a disciple or a sadhaka and how he was going in Shivamaraji's book, we studied one of them. Oh. Steve, was it Steve? His name was. Oh, the the end of uh, um, the end of uh, uh, Maharaj tells a story to 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 illustrate a devotee going through the different stages of devotion. Yes. And he wasn't very serious, but then he took it seriously, and then in the end, Goranitai to reveal themselves. Yeah, basically that's it. So you had a question from that, Mother yeah, what was I asking? Oh, God. It's gone. Sorry. No, no problem. I was going to ask from this relating to that, that just appeared. Yeah, in if it comes up, yeah. Remember, we uh, read through that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the end bit was explaining how a sadhaka is going through. No, my, yeah, the question was um, when that devotee no the guru then started realizing how his disciple and then guiding him towards that way mm. you know then wanted to do bhajan on his own yeah so, yeah that's interesting go on please. yes so i was thinking that as you do get older if you want to be more on your own is that wrong thing to do like we're talking that we should have association. Well, that's, I'm just peaceful being at home on my own, you know. I'm just saying, to myself, I'm not, I'm getting, no, it's, old, no, right? I'm getting old. No, it's, uh, in one sense, um, it's only natural that a devotee is going to want to relish and okay. become absorbed in bhajan. I mean, that's the whole point of, um, for instance, Vana Prasta, yeah, where one actually creates space and time for doing bhajan. And at a certain point, one's own association can be can be favorable for, for their devotional practice. Yeah. Mm. So therefore, it's not like you're, you know, it's not like you're one set okay. It's not the same as someone who's avoiding Vaishnavas because of uh, uh, because of material attachment. One prefers to keep in their own space, aloof from association of Vaishnavas. That's different from a person who's developed a natural desire and taste for prolonged bhajan. Yeah, yeah. that means they means that's why. Maj just describes in Sudha Bhakti Tatamani, there's as we progress in spiritual life, there's a different sadhana. So a sadhana may change. And we, and we can see that. And I see that in devotees of your age and others as well. They tend to, you know, in the you know, in the younger years, you attend this program, that program, this house program, that program, this program, that waiting. But then as you get older, you become more attached to the essence of bhakti, hearing and chanting. So you so you do less of those programs. And, yeah. and then you get the young married couples, the youngsters, they all go into these programs. Yeah. But you've got those who have been practicing 30 years or more. They kind of a bit choosy where they go because they take their sudden and they, they take it and chanting very seriously. And they don't want to, you know, unnecessarily. So that's, but then you got, if your service is like a sannyasi even, yeah, I heard a, I watched a little quote from Keshav Maharaj today that um, even sannyasis who are always 
preaching, always giving out and always in the public, a lot of them. Sannyasis also arrange for themselves to be out the public eye to do intense bhajan and sadhana. Yeah, traditionally, it would be done during Kartik. But you see, all of our senior Vaishnavas, they will often um, go dark. Yeah? Mm. Some. Mm. Jai Pataka Maharaj, he's, he's, he's exceptional. Mm -hmm. He's, he always gives himself 24 hours a day, every day, you know. So you get the point, Mohan Chandra, really, it's not like yeah, you yeah. are, your stature are becoming, you know, aloof from Vaishnava yeah. Association. No, you're just, um, you're just serious about your bhajan, serious about your sadness. So you're not going to attend a Gulab Jaman eating contest in a temple. Yeah. Like you go cooking, <laughs> they be class is fine, and then you're sitting there eating all sorts of prasad, and you might as well just okay. On that example, like say, the uh, this appearance coming up, and there's a bit of um thing about like cooking schedule, cooking things. So yeah. then in the end, I've de decided, uh, right, forget about the cooking thing on that day, I'll just and chant and read and whatever you know yeah and but that that's like normally i'm always cooking on auspicious days no was, and that's up to you because no, of, because of your seniority you can make those type of choices and it'll be yeah. and, it, and it's a krishna conscious choice mm. yeah at some point i think at some point you know yeah just have to just like forget it why get into that kind of thing I just brought, um, I just took out the Shemit Bhagavatam and this already for say already for reading. Look, <laughs> yes. of five. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so that is up. still Krishna conscious, right? Yeah. And, so this brings up an interesting point because for someone at your, you know, your maturity and your practice of years in Krishna consciousness, that type of decision may not be good for a younger person. No. Yeah. You know. So you see how we can see how one's choice of sadhana or one will change according to one's yeah. Um, the fruit is not rape, rape, raped yet when we are young, ripe when we are very young. So we need to put a lot into, and then slowly, slowly it's sedimentating. Yeah. So it's so it's good for younger devotees to be absorbed in. Chester in, in active service, you know, it's good to be in intense, have some opportunity to render service. Mm. Anyway, interesting uh, subject. Yeah, just, that's where yeah. I'm thinking when we were talking about Vedi Bhakti, Raganuga Bhakti, and we said in between space. Yeah, there's a mixture. So this is like the same thing. Okay, you've been doing services. And you need to now, you now feeling you need to be more absorbed. So this part is in between. Yeah. Doing, not, and mind is saying, oh, she's still carrying on. And also the mind saying, no, but you can recant this, that. So in between. Yeah. So also practically speaking, we're going to have to do that because our body cannot do what it used to do before. Yes. So we left. So practically to speaking. We're going to have to make those adjustments in our devotional service. Like we may come a point where you cannot come cook the hutch bog, or I can't cook the mongolari sweets. You never know. Some devotees can go for many years. Yeah, because yeah, because and there, and there will be some devotees who will take another path. They will just do service, service, and service until they drop. <laughs> You know, you got the ones who have that mood. They will just do, you know, for them, they only know just service, 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 like that. So some devotees, that will be their path. And they will get mercy from that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They get mercy from yeah, that. They read somewhere about that, yeah. yeah. All right. So let's pause here. And um, yes, yeah, so we pause that. Yeah, four asterisks on page 816. So I don't know if anyone listening to this recording. Hope you find it interesting. And I put a request. In. If you are listening to the recording and you like it, put your thumbs up. 
on the YouTube. And if you don't like it, put the thumbs down. <laughs> okay. All right. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. 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 Hare